Hello everybody, and welcome to a new mini-series titled The Sickest Characters of Fighting Game History. I'm starting this series due to a delay on an upcoming video essay, so we're starting this to help hold over until the next video. This is going to be a quasi-pilot episode, so if you guys like it, make sure to let me know and tell me what characters you'd like to see in the future. Today, we are going to discuss Anji Mito from Guilty Gear Accent Board Plus R and what makes him so fun and unique. So, Anji is a very unique character. You can't really define him with traditional means, but if I had to, I'd call him a mix-up character with a very strong Oki game and a very unique neutral. First, let's talk about what makes Anji's neutral so interesting. Anji has a mechanic called Guard Point built into many of his moves. Guard Point is essentially an advancing block that activates during specific frames during a move, and if Anji is hit during the Guard Point frames, he takes no damage and the move continues on. This allows Anji's moves to be very unorthodox, as a lot of his moves feature Guard Point, but come out very slowly, meaning it is a key part of Anji's game plan to convert the enemy's offense into his own by strategically throwing out normals specifically to Guard Point an enemy attack, allowing him to dance with the flow of battle and control the tides of the offense. After Anji guard points a move, he can cancel this guard point animation into one of three follow-ups, which serve both as an exciting reward for countering your enemy's offense, as well as a way to better shift the tides to Anji's favor by way of a knockdown, extended combo, or a super. This allows Anji to play passively and wait for the opponent to make a move, before swiping the rug from under their feet. But Anji doesn't need to play this way, it's just a way he can play. There are two sides to every coin, and for every guard point champion, there's a Fujin enthusiast. Now, let me tell you why Fujin is good. One, it has invuln frames. A lot of them. Two, it moves Anji forward for safe approach. Three, it has cancels out of it that allow Anji to consistently continue Fujining, even if the opponent blocks it. Four, it's, it's just like really good. I want to focus on the cancels out of Fujin because I feel like they're a big part of what makes Anji unique. After Anji inputs Fujin, he can then input one of the five buttons the game has in order to have him do a follow-up. The follow-ups are, as in order of button strength, a sweep of projectiles that keep the opponent from mashing and under pressure, a jump forward that lets Anji escape opponents who avoid Fujin, as well as punishing those who blocked with a grab, a sweep that knocks down opponents blocking high, an overhead that punishes opponents blocking low, as well as letting Anji continue pressure with those who block, as it is zero on block. Finally, a better version of the overhead that comes out faster and is plus five on block. Now, most people deal with these follow-ups by simply reacting to the overhead and grab and blocking low. However, Anji has a way to deal with these as well. You see, the cancel window for Fujin follow-ups goes for the entire recovery of Fujin, meaning Anji has 27 frames of wiggle room for his mix. If the enemy always blocks low at first, then stands up to block an overhead, you can just wait for them to stand up, then do the low. If the enemy waits for a second, then jabs to try to counter the grab, you can delay the H follow-up, which has guard point, to punish their attack. If they try to run away and escape, the P follow-up can be used to sweep the surrounding area. And all of this can be done at any point during the 27 frames of recovery, meaning the cancels pose a massive threat as they cannot be option selected. So, Anji can guard point to start his offense, continue his pressure with Fujin, but what does he do when he secures the knockdown? Well, let me introduce you to the beautiful butterfly. Anji is at his most threatening when he gets the knockdown because of this special right here. When used, the butterfly travels along the screen, and when it hits the opponent, it transforms into a hawk and dives down at them. This makes it so that if Anji sets the butterfly up to hit just as the opponent wakes up, they have to block the hawk's descent or risk getting hit by it. And if they do block the hawk's descent, then Anji gets to use his incredible mix to make them mess up their block and hopefully score another knockdown. Now, Anji's mix-up game is perhaps the most interesting of all, as the way he enforces his mix-ups are very unique and interesting. Anji has two special moves and some key normals that allow him to threaten an opponent blocking the hawk, as well as one very interesting tool we will discuss shortly. First and most simple of all, he has a command overhead and a sweep. If the enemy doesn't react to the overhead and Anji times it correctly, he can hit them with the overhead while they are in the middle of blocking hawk, causing them to get hit by it, allowing Anji to combo into a sweep. If the enemy tries to mash against Anji to hopefully hit him out of the overhead, he can simply mash a quick low or guard point normal to stop them right in their tracks. If the enemy jumps to hopefully chicken block against Anji, he can use a 6-2-3-H move, which is an air command grab, 
snatching them from the sky and throwing them down once more. Now, all of this works best in the corner for obvious reasons, but if the enemy is out at mid-screen, Anji actually gains one extra layer of mix that he can enforce. If Anji performs his 2 on 4 p hop next to the downed opponent, he will jump over them, forcing the opponent to switch the side they are blocking on. I mentioned previously that Anji actually has one more very unique way of mixing the opponent while they are blocking, and that is because he can feint his overhead. Anji's taunt has a startup that uses the exact same animation as his overhead, and just when it's about to get to the part that's different, it can be cancelled. This means Anji can taunt, the enemy will see the taunt and believe it's an overhead, then Anji can cancel the taunt into a low and combo into a knockdown. So Anji clearly has good Oki. But he actually has one more tool to help him get those knockdowns that is very interesting, and one that not a lot of players even know about at all. Anji's 3S is a startup that can be cancelled during frames 8 to 10 of its animation into his 5S or 5H, allowing Anji to utilize some very unorthodox block strengths that will help with confusing the opponent into making those mistakes that Anji capitalizes so much off of. We've already established that Anji is a menace on the ground, so you'd think that that means he struggles at getting in or playing in the air, right? Well, you'd be wrong. Anji has an amazing super jump, allowing him to get in for free on people who don't expect it, and on people who do expect it, guess what? He can mix them too. Anji's JD stops him dead in the air, allowing him to super jump in on an opponent ready to anti-air, then stop on a dime right before going into anti-air range, allowing him to land and punish the whiffed anti-air attempt. All of these options Anji has at any given situation allow him to be a truly one-of-a-kind character. Anji is a mix-up character done right. His mix is real, always a threat, and he always can threaten his Oki in any situation, even when the opponent is attacking him. He's scary on defense. He's scary on offense. He's scary when you're down. He's scary when you're blocking. He's scary in the air. He's scary by a bear. He's scary in a chair. He's scary at the fair. Anji Mito is scary everywhere. And so now I conclude this Dr. Seuss rhyme. This is the end of the video. Thanks for your time. <laughs>